Welcome to Bonifab Custom. Today is our third video for this week. Don't forget to subscribe because subscribers at the end of the week will be part of a giveaway. But today we're going to be building a pantograph. A pantograph basically was invented a long time ago to copy writing. But we're building this pantograph for our plasma cutter so we could copy a template and then cut it on the other side. Let's get right into it. So before we can get into making this thing, we have to do some drawings up. We're basically using a two inch inner diameter thick wall tube and some aluminum bar because that's basically what we have available to us right now. So we'll do some drawings up, take some measurements, and then we'll cut some steel. For our main supports, we're gonna use this three quarter by one inch solid steel bar. And we're gonna cut them into one foot or 12 inch lengths. I like to use this cold saw because there's less dust than an abrasive saw. And it'll cut steel and aluminum with a little bit of oil. Now that we have all our pieces cut up, so our one inch by three quarter inch solid steel bar, two pieces of those at 12 inches, and our flat bar, aluminum, which is half inch by two, 32 inches long, and we have two pieces of those. We're also gonna be using these bearings, which is a two inch diameter bearing and a one inch ID hole. Now, the only reason I'm using these, we could use smaller ones, but I have a whole bunch of these. Uh, they're like a surplus bearing. And we're also, we cut these um, pieces for the bearings to fit into. And they're one inch thick or one inch height, uh, one inch ID, uh, two inch ID, and about a quarter inch wall tube and we have to machine the inside of those so the bearings fit in there nicely. For the bolts, these are bolts that I had also. They're like a low head bolt and they're 5 8 diameter and about six inches long and we have locking nuts that go with it. So let's get into machining the housing for the bearings and then we can start welding this together. So now on our lathe, we're going to machine the inner diameter to fit our bearings nice and snugly. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna put it inside our chuck and we're gonna bore the inside with our boring bar. So let's do that. Now that we have our parts welded up, let's press in two of these bearings in each side. Now we're gonna mark up these two bars, which are or half inch by two inch aluminum bar. They are 32 inches long from outside. We're gonna mark a center point and two points on either side that will be an inch and an eighth from the outside.
So let's punch some holes on our iron worker. We're gonna punch some 5 8 holes and one one inch hole. And that one inch hole is gonna hold our plasma cutter. So we're gonna need some bearing spacers. These spacers are gonna go in between the bolt, which is 5 8 diameter, and the bearing inner diameter, which is one inch. I already had some of these Delrin spacers, so plastic spacers made up for another job, and these are spares. So the diameter on the inside is already made for this bolt. It's already 5 8 All we have to do now is turn down some shoulders to fit into the one inch diameter of the bearing. So we're gonna do that on our lathe. Let's do that now. Now that we have our aluminum pieces all cut out, we punched our holes. We have our steel main arms done. We need to make some sort of housing to hold the main pivot. So the main pivot will be inside both of these bearing housings. It needs to be strong enough to hold it from causing it to flex, especially when we have something on the other end, like a plasma cutter. So the housing right here is gonna be made up of some quarter inch plate. We're gonna punch a hole through it so we can put our main uh, bolt through it to hold our main uh, bearings. And we're gonna make a housing on top of it just to give it that extra strength so it doesn't wanna bend. So now we have all our parts ready to assemble. Our main pivot bracket, the main arms with the bearings in it, and the actual aluminum arms that are gonna hold our plasma cutter and our pickup stylus. So let's put it all together and see if it actually works. So now it's all together. It functions really nice. It's nice and smooth, yet it's very rigid. And we need that rigidity because we could be putting a router for engraving on this side or our plasma cutter. We just wanna make it versatile. And on this side here, we're gonna make a special stylus. We're gonna use this, um, these bolts because I have them. And we're gonna turn down the, the front of it to a point so we can use it for copying things. And this would just fit into this side here. And for the plasma cutter, it would fit into this hole. Now the plasma cutter I'm using is a hypotherm. And if I just take off the tip there, fits right in there. And you're ready to start plasma cutting and engraving. Thanks again for watching Bonifab Custom with this special build today, our pantograph machine. If you're interested in one, we make them as a kit. They're very inexpensive. Just direct message me and I'll tell you what they cost. Thanks again for watching these special builds throughout the whole week and don't forget to subscribe because at the end of the week we are having a giveaway now tomorrow we will be showing basically the other half 
of this build, basically, which is the table of the plasma cutter, a very inexpensive way of making it. And we're going to show you on Bonifab Custom how to do that tomorrow. Thanks again.